Good morning, New York. Um, Angela, Daily Bite of Health and Video 59. Today is um, video. Today the video is going to be about the wisdom of eating healthy and uh, about food traditions and um, about my childhood, my nutrition childhood. Um, a lot of people these days uh, ask me, you know, about um, what to eat, uh, how to eat healthy and simply, how not to overcomplicate food and nutrition, and how to stay healthy, fit, lean, how to look great and feel great, have a lot of energy for life, and uh, all of that that human beings are supposed to be, right? Fit, healthy, vibrant, beautiful. And uh, the funny thing is, the more I learn about nutrition, the deeper I get into science, the more books I read about genetics, and um, the more I understand how, how much wisdom are rooted in our food traditions, our food, food cultures, that we kind of forgot. And look where it got us. We, we at the society have uh, been trying to make it faster, more efficient, you know, to, to fit in as much nutrition, vitamins and minerals in a pill as possible or in any kind of food as possible, make it faster, you know, make it like a factory of uh, like a car factory or something, right? And uh, it really, I mean, it's, we created a lot of food products. There is a huge, you know, abundance of food supply, uh, but somehow we lost the most important part of the whole process. We were supposed to create more nutrition, right? More value in our food, not to create a good business model. Anyway, the more I learn, the more I understand how probably I'm getting back to my childhood when it comes to nutrition. You know, I uh, when I was growing up as a kid, um, I had two grandmothers. Two grandmothers. My father is Ukrainian, my mom is Russian, and um, uh, I used to go to one of the other um, grandma every summer. And they both have farms. One is in Ukraine, in the south of Ukraine, and one is in the south of Russian Siberia. And my favorite food rituals back then were. I would go up really early, you know, I didn't have any clock or alarm clock, I would just go up, get up, uh, and I would go for my breakfast. And where would I go? To the garden, that's called agarot uh, in Russian. And I would pick all kinds of vegetables like tomatoes, cucumbers, um, carrots, eat them right off from the ground. I didn't worry about dirt or... I don't know, viruses or microbes or bacteria, any, none of that mattered to me. Then I would eat strawberries, green peas, uh, I would try some herbs, you know, greens, whatever tasted good, I, I would eat it. Um, then usually I would go to another garden that was uh, where my grandma well, was growing fruits like apples um, that were like this big not like, you know, this big, but really small and really sweet apples, really tart wild cherries, pears, um, and some berries that I don't know the name in English, uh, I never saw them here, but um, I would eat all of that and then it would just take off and go and play, um, enjoy life, right? My grandma would uh, usually get mad at me for making a mess uh, in the, the garden. You know, I, we were supposed to eat and pick up things at certain times in certain um, order, and I would never follow any order. <laughs> you know, I was a kid. I didn't understand any of that. Um, yeah, then would, I would take off and come back probably around lunchtime, you know, whenever I felt hungry. And then I, my mom uh, or my grandma, they would make me eat my soup, you know, with all the vegetables, but also like so much fat flowing on top of that soup, you know, and some, I don't know, chicken stuff, legs or some organs, or um, I actually preferred fish soup uh, that, my grandma would sometimes make out of the fish that my uncle would bring the day before. 
and um, yeah, that was soup, then I would probably eat some vegetables, or I, I wasn't really hungry during the day, right? Um, and then I would go and play and do, do what kids do during the day, and then at dinner I would come back, and I wasn't really hungry at that time either, but I mean, for the main course, you know, there were like a lot of fish, different meats, the vegetables, sauerkraut, uh, pickled vegetables, um, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, just a lot of like vegetables, different kinds of meats and fish. And but I was always hungry for the freshest milk that my grandma would get um, from the cows right before dinner. Um, milk that were warm, you know she would just get it from the cows and it would be still warm this is like the freshest the fattiest the most delicious milk you'll ever get you could ever get in your life um from the cow the cows that just came back from their grazing the grass they schedule <laughs> with their friends cows um yeah i would drink that milk with cream extra cream on top or take a spoon and get some extra cream from the fridge and um and i would eat it with some freshly baked in handmade oven bread and that was my dinner uh, i could eat a lot of that and my grandma was was joking like where all this food goes into this you know small body uh i was skinny when i was growing up and um she she would also like jokingly ask me to leave some for others <laughs> she, so i don't eat it all um that was my food you know schedule or i don't know routine i would eat a lot of like fresh vegetables from the garden then i would eat the soup with fat and, and all the you know different parts of animals and milk and fresh bread that was it and i never felt better and I, I believe in that, you know, ritual, in that, in those food traditions and the way my grandma and my mom would cook food. There was so much wisdom and I believe that a lot of my health, vitality and fitness comes from that more than from anything. It's only maybe now I start to really understand why it worked, uh, how it affected my body and why the more we um, go away from our food traditions, the worse we feel. Like some things in life we are not supposed to hack. You know, we can enhance the ways we grow food, we, uh, how allowing nature to take its course in a more maybe efficient and ordered way. Like my grandma, you know, she used to have this order how she would grow vegetables, how she would pick them up at certain times, you know, and then, you know, there would be some fertilizing going on in spring or autumn. Not really familiar with all this, you know, <laughs> farming stuff. But we can improve. We definitely can create more nutritious food, but maybe not the way we are trying to do it with all the GMOs or supplements and creating a lot of food of really poor quality. It's We need to make it smarter and we need to learn from all those cultures and wisdom and build on top of them, not just crash it all and do our own thing with really poor understanding of the whole package of food that nature designs for us. How you should eat? Go back to to those traditions that you might have in your family. Learn from traditions in the book, on the internet, how ancient people, you know, used to eat and why they did it, how they did it, you know, like fermented foods, organ meats, uh, bron bone broth, fresh vegetables, uh, no sugar, I mean, like, sh sugar was invented pretty recently, so what's that all fuss about when people say, oh, we need sugar, I'm like, Anyway, um, so eat food. Calories are for lab rats. That's my favorite saying these days. And it's gonna bring you more health than you could imagine you could have. That's it for today.
I'm gonna write a bigger blog post about it. I actually wrote it, I just need to post it over this video. And eat food, calories of a lab, lab rats, Angela, daily bite of health. So yeah, eat some real food today. Quit all the fake, fake stuff, okay? Thank you for watching. I love you all guys. Thank you for all the support. Thank you. Thank you for all the love and questions and everything. Comments. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful day. Get outside and have an amazing day. <laughs> uh, video 59 and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.